Welcome to Wrestling with Success, the best and only podcast for the wrestlers of tomorrow. Please welcome your host, Neil Nile Nigel. Oh, right. <clears throat> your host and future champion, Neil McMillan. Yeah. So, guys and girls and wrestling fans worldwide, welcome to episode 10. That's right. Double figures, episode 10 of Wrestling With Success. We've made it to double figures. Episode 10. 10. 10. The perfect 10. This episode, I have quite possibly one of the chirpiest guys I have ever met. This guy is always wearing a smile. Always. He has a set of dimples that if you're not careful, you can fall right into. This kid has one hell of a future and he has so much experience at such a young age. He is wrestling's cheeky chap. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Lewis the Maverick Mayhew. Lewis. Hello. How are you doing? Thank you very oh, much. I'm, I'm I'm so happy. That was what? that was lovely. What the wrestlers, uh, what the listeners don't know is uh, that I messed up my intro and I had to start again. <laughs> and uh, it's the very first, <laughs> it's the very first time I've ever actually messed up one of my intros. And it was oh. all on you, Lewis. So you should that feel. Was... Uh... Oh, that was beautiful. Um, yeah. So how are you? Anyway? out the refs. Yeah, I'm. I'm amazing. Um, all the better for being here. Good stuff. Loving life. You just come back off holiday, yes? I have. I was uh, down in Laysdown for uh, for a couple of days. Uh, oh, nice, good, nice. good chance to get away. Good chance to get away. Um, had a show down there as well. Work where you can. Yeah, no, I saw I saw a, a little uh, video of that. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. We'll talk oh, about good, that later. Good. So, Lewis, let's kick things straight off. Let's introduce yourself to the listeners. So, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the world of wrestling? Yeah, sure. So uh, when I was about eight years old, um, not too long ago, actually, um, (laughs) I was randomly looking through Sky on my TV, bored out of my brain, and uh, I came across WWE superstars, and I'd never heard of the WWE. I'd never, like... I had no idea what it was at all, but it had superstars in it. And I like deep down, everyone's interested in being famous. And I was like, maybe this is some sort of tutorial. Like this is how I, this is how I become a superstar, turn it on. And there's just guys in tight clothing doing cool flips. And like the, everyone always thinks this is weird, but like the very, like one of the very first wrestlers I ever remember seeing on TV was, was a uh, Trent Beretta. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah, that was that was one of the guys who uh, he always stuck out in my head. Like, I I was he was one of the guys I remember first seeing ever, and he kind of drew me in because he was like, this was like early WWE for him. Um, of course, now he's in uh, New Japan and uh, ROH and stuff like that. Yeah, but uh, like I just I remember his bright gear. It was like pink, green, and black. It was it's just amazing. And then seeing all like the cuts from Raw and SmackDown and all the fireworks and uh, like f- all the the flips and the the like daredevilness of it all, yeah, something drew me to that. And then from that point on, I watched it religiously, like got up every morning to go and like see if there was anything more to do with this WWE. And then I bet uh, your whole world was shaken upside down when mate, you realised like <laughs> Raw SmackDown pay per views. I I had no idea like. It was only like uh, when I was about ten, I went to see my first like uh, live wrestling show, and I believe that was for uh, Mega Slam, I think, or All Stars okay. uh, in in Dartford, the Orchard Theatre. Oh yeah, and, I've uh, been there. I went yeah, to see yeah, a show there. Yeah, yeah, cracking venue. Like, uh, and Gang Gangrel was on the show. Yeah. I remember going home and like trying to find out as much as I could about Gangrel and. I uh, found out he used to tag with Edge and Christian, and uh, that just completed <laughs> for for that point. That completed like what I wanted to do. I met like a famous guy 
I yeah. remember he spat blood on me during his entrance, and I was just so <laughs> ecstatic. Like, um, <laughs> he and, does uh, like a bit of Dartford Gangrel. I always see, uh, um, I always see, <laughs> you used to be advertised so. quite a lot. But um, when I went to the orchard, I saw a. I saw a fake cane. Somebody came out and uh, it, it wasn't a real cane, but at the time, I don't know how old how old I was. I must have been about nine or ten. Yeah. Uh, at the time, cane coming out, his music and everything, the full, it was like the 1998 cane where it was like the, the oh. old get up. And he came oh, out God. and ch- just put someone for a table with a choke slam and that, that was me my mind was blown it was just some was... Like, probably some other like old janitor or something dressed as game but that is beautiful that's I amazing it. i always one guy i always remember seeing on the posters was uh i didn't know who he was until like i got into wrestling and started training properly but uh was el Liguero. he was always on the posters i saw and i'd always look at the posters and see a guy with like horns and like a fucking yeah. bald patch in his in his mask like i never i like that always fascinated me and when i like saw him in action like it just really nostalgic for me like looking at the uh like the programs and stuff and seeing a guy who i'd grown up knowing of but not actually seeing and uh like seeing him on shows that i'm on just shows like yeah um, wow. yeah like how how far i've come in such a short amount of time which is mad it's so crazy so how long, like, have, how long have you been wrestling now then uh i started training march 1st 2015 so just over two years i think um which really in in wrestling isn't that much time at all no no As, especially with like on on shows when you're like uh talking with guys and they've been doing it for like 10 years or however yeah. many years and then there's little old 17 year old me coming along with two years experience thinking i've been in it for ages well. Lewis, yeah I, ha- I hate you 17 all these shows like, as well like, and you're only 17 it's I incredible I, i'm jealous i'm not gonna lie oh, Lewis, I'm don't, jealous. don't be jealous <laughs> <laughs> no you've done very well it's such a short space of time so where did you start uh, start your training Uh, I started uh, down in IPW um, in Swanley, and uh, like I spent so long of of, uh, of a period of time just looking for a training school which I could find, uh, and I never found any for years um, until I found I think the first ever school I, f- I saw was Progress, and at the time I didn't know what Progress was. Um, I was quite oblivious to it, and uh, I went down for one of the, like to start one of their beginner courses. And, uh, like, there, there was something to do with the fact there was, like, uh, not enough interest or something. And I remember getting up super early because I was so excited, getting to the venue and seeing it was, like, closed off. And then having to ring someone and being like, oh, no, it's, it's not on. And I remember I went home and I was just so devastated. <laughs> and I think that just made me want to go and be a wrestler more. Like, because yeah. you always hear about, like, people who didn't quite make it because of certain things and i wasn't going to let something like that stop me so when i found ipw i thought i'd go and grab that opportunity as soon as i could and i I got really lucky because i started training when i was 14 uh it was like a month before my my 15th birthday and uh they were kind enough to take me on and uh train me up and get me ready for shows um and about so I, I had my first match in July, uh, when I first, July of 2015, uh, when I started training in March. And looking back now, I was That's absolutely... That's a short space hor- of time. Yeah, like, just looking back, I was absolutely horrific. Uh, like, <laughs> it, it was against James Davis from the London Riot, or ex-member of the London Riots now, which is sad. Um, I remember, like, I had... I, as soon as like news broke that I was I was debuting on that show to my family like that was it they they all bought tickets yeah all like filled out most of the hall in Swanley the White Oak Leisure Centre oh was it there was it yeah yeah White Oak Leisure Centre I I used to I used to live in Hexable just down the road so that's quite um, I used to go uh, quite quite often for swimming and stuff and I didn't realise I opened um, I opened IPW until a little bit later on when I was older and then uh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That's, uh, so, so that's where you had your show, was it? Yeah, I've, I'm 
like the White Oak Leisure Center always has a special place in my heart. Like it's where I first started training, where I had my first like experience inside of a ring, where I had my first match. Yeah. Uh, where I've had like where I had my first like main event of a show. Um, so like it hold, it holds a lot of meaning to me. Just one building in Swanley. Um, yeah. And I just remember coming through the curtain and hearing my family go mental and uh, like subsequently everyone else going a bit mental. <laughs> and uh, that that just I knew from that point that is I, I knew I wanted to be a wrestler, but that proved it to me just the rush that i got from that because i thought i'd come out and everything would be quite dead like i never knew really what to expect but i couldn't have asked for any more like jd was so um giving towards me like he didn't uh like i remember hitting a, a 450 splash which was horrendous because i just need him like in an <laughs> awkward place and uh yeah <laughs> but yeah he was never like bitter about it because i'd like messed up a 450 I like that wasn't the worst one I've ever done but like it was it was pretty bad looking back but um <laughs> but yeah he was just so kind and generous for me like coming in and nearly winning yeah. and then getting dropped on my head with a tombstone well to um, trying out a 450 on your debut matches uh <laughs> yeah is, like uh, I'd, I'd, I'd done it a few play. times in training and then uh JD was like oh don't you do a 450? And I was like, oh, I've done it in training. He went, have you got a video? So I showed him a video of it, and he was like, yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. You're still then, alive uh, to tell the tale. Yeah, yeah, just about. <laughs> and then uh, la- later on in that the same night, I won the uh, the Future, what was that? Like, Future 11, I'm going to say. Future No, Future 13. Future 13 uh, Rumble match, which was the main event of the show oh I saw a video and, uh, of that so that was at White Oak was it that was at White Oak yeah oh um, I, have to, I have to look at a little look a little bit closely back at that then oh, yeah good. like uh, the the match uh, is, I'm sure it's still on YouTube somewhere uh, my debut um, but yeah I just remember being so happy and content with myself like even though like everyone else probably watched that and thought it was a bit like naff I remember being proud that I had made it to the point I had at that time yeah uh whereas now i can like look back and be like god you were rotten <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah, I mean, yeah. so how did uh, the maverick come around then did you debut as uh maverick or uh i i did debut as maverick um it was I mean, it's one hell of a cool name oh yeah i love i love the name maverick uh but uh i remember there were three other people on the ipw shows called lewis he had like a uh, who was a Lewis Howley was one of them. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was on the IPW shows then. Um, Lewis Howley, Lewis something or other. Like uh, there were a few Lewises. And Any uh, Lewis promote... Barrett's? No, unfortunately not. No if, I'd Barrett, if I'd met he Lewis Barrett, if I'd met Lewis Barrett, it would have been, been a squash started. match. It would have been oh, a yeah, squash definitely. match. Hundred <laughs> percent, and rightfully so. He deserves nothing but the best. So, I mean, um, do, did you go in as wanting to be a high flyer? You said you saw all these flips and everything. Did you go in yeah, wanting like, to be that? And uh, Well, I I, uh, I always wanted to be, like, um, kind of a quick, fast wrestler. Like, especially growing up watching people like Trent or Rey Mysterio was a big one for me. Um, just seeing these people and, like, they had the ability to captivate an audience attention by, like, just soaring through the air and I just remember going that would be so cool like just to be able to do these cool flips like I know people slate it nowadays but like it's it's cool like just leave it alone it's wicked <laughs> um so yeah I, I guess I'd always I've always wanted to be like the high flying wrestler um yeah just steal everybody's moves because I think they're cool <laughs> well at least you're at least you're honest about it and one thing yeah. i will say as well lewis not only are you good at your high flying as well i saw your strikes and i've mentioned to you before as well <laughs> yeah. i, I oh, don't yeah. know what it is about them but it's not even just the fact the strike it's that it's the aftermath it's the kind of like you, you're feeling your knuckles because you've just laid them across somebody's face and we both yeah, know you absolutely. haven't but, yeah. but you, you, you're silly so that's one well, thing i will commend you on is your is your uh is your striking ability well, that, that's like I'm a firm believer in the fact like 
when I wrestled for like Steve Manelli on the camp shows and uh, you have like a 17 year old effectively child come out and stand in the ring yeah. if I can make one dad in that audience go God, did they actually hit him then? Yeah. <laughs> like, so it's all in like the little things, like hitting someone, then like shaking your hand and going, "Cool, like I've hurt myself on that." <laughs> like, yeah. And, well, uh, I, I'm a dad, and you made me go, "Oh, did he actually nut him?" Then? <laughs> yeah, literally. That's that's what I aim to achieve. Like, if we can, if we have, as wrestlers can make uh, an audience go, "Oh, like yeah. Ooh, may, maybe he caught him with that." Or yeah. like uh, the one, the one I hear a lot is, "Cut! Do you hear that connection?" <laughs> that that like <laughs> makes me laugh without fail. <laughs> so, Lewis, now me being a professional journalist uh, that I am, mm. obviously, oh, yeah. and do it and doing my research on you, Mister Mayhew, oh, I've yeah. got to say you're a hard man to keep up with because <laughs> there's so, so many promotions: IPW, oh. RCWA, Battle Pro Wrestling, UKPW. Yeah. WrestleForce, yeah. ACW, yeah. Dropkick. <laughs> wow. We, we, a few more. Which, There's a few more. But... There probably is. <laughs> which yeah, one's your yeah. favourite? Oh, God. I'm don't joking. Make me choose. I'm, jo- I'm, I'm fights. joking. <laughs> I'm only joking. But I'm all stuck. seriousness, oh. that is one hell of a list. Yeah, man. Like, uh, I remember Pete Dunn told me when I had a Pete Dunn seminar, he told me work as much as you can, any way you can. Um, like, the money doesn't have to be great. The money will come to you eventually once you're getting your name out there. So you can work in a hall in front of, like, five, ten people. His experience. Like, you can work anywhere. It, the, the smaller the audience is, like, you can you can mess up stuff and then go, right, that's what I yeah. need to do. So when you get to these bigger audiences, you can you know what you need to do because you've practiced it in front of an audience that might not be as big as that, but you've practiced it, you know, like your routines because performing in front of, uh, your trainees and, uh, your friends at training, like that's one thing, but performing in front of an audience who have paid to come and watch you is completely different. So yeah. if you can work anywhere as often as you can, that's always good experience. Yeah. And I suppose, uh, in front of all your, your the trainees and your friends, they kind of know what you're about. You you kind of know how to make them mark out a little bit. You know what yeah, moves yeah. impress them. Whereas you go into shows, I suppose you're completely fresh. You've got to try and convince these people why they should mm. give a crap about you. I suppose. Yeah, especially like where I'm working uh, now. Anarchy Pro is tied up. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, yeah, no, I've saw, I've saw I saw that on your uh, on your feed as well. But like I oh, said, yeah. it was hard to keep up with it. All. Yeah, Anarchy Pro, uh, over 18 shows, which really I shouldn't be allowed in. Um, but they've uh, they've been kind enough to put me on the shows. And uh, if I, like, you, again, it goes back to, like, legitimacy. And if I can make an over 18 audience look at me as a child and go, cool, like, he's not just a kid. Like, he can yeah. give it some as well. Um, yeah, just making an audience believe it as well. So I mean, you mentioned about how you're on the holiday camps as well. So yeah, and that, I what I noticed as well that uh, I suppose they're more kids orientated as well. So it's, yeah, what's the difference between the wrestling in front of you know a family show and more kids, and then going to do an anarchy anarchy show where you're doing over eighteen stuff? What's the kind of difference that you have to perform there? Um, so for for camp shows, uh, my typical thing is to like make eye contact and uh connect with at least one like just one kid because yeah. if you can connect with what uh, one kid not only are they going to buy all of your merch right they're gonna cheer for you as loud as possible because you have made that connection with them and as soon as you make that connection with them and they start coming up when you ask them to everyone around them is going to start doing it and if you can get like one person per side you're going to have the whole room with you um and then like just if and then that kid will like go to their parents and be like mom like he looked at me or mom he high-fived me like um that that sort of that aspect of it whereas for anarchy you've got a like it's i wouldn't say it's less crowd work but it's like oh this this is quite hard so like when we got the the email about anarchy like the rundown of the show uh they described it as non-stop pops like that's what they were going for they wanted the crowd to be up at everything so 
like making sure that you can uh like i don't, I don't want to say get all of your moves in that you can but like make the, if you can make an over 18 audience care and you can get them invested in your match then that's a totally different thing altogether than yeah. making a kid talk to you about his parents or whatever no, it's solid advice, man. It's solid advice, and I suppose that yeah. when you have that kid, you've now got a you know a kind of fan for a fan not yeah. for so much life, but he's going to follow. He's going to grow up, and he's going to remember that. And uh, yeah, exactly. Just like, like I can remember Kane, and you can remember Gangrel. <laughs> exactly, especially when you're going back to these venues. Like I was, I was at Priory Hill in uh, in Laysdown for three weeks, like uh, every every Sunday for three weeks straight, and. Like, even when I was walking around beforehand in the show, like, getting some food or whatever, or, like, even walking down the arcade strips and stuff, I'd have kids running over to me going, oh, can I have a picture of you? You're Maverick, right? And I was like, like, I've I've obviously done something right here if they're remembering yeah. who I am. Like, that's what I aim to do. If people can remember me and talk about me on social media, not only does it inflate my ego, but it makes everybody <laughs> else pay attention. Well, no, definitely. I mean, I, we, what we've only met each other, what, fourth? three four times probably yeah you, that, you, yeah. De- you definitely stand out like i said in the introduction one of the the chirpiest men i've ever met <laughs> always, always smiling it, it, it's just true you've got to be friendly and uh, you are yeah. a friendly, friendly dude yeah so, thanks I mean, man thank you all that all those matches and uh, so have roughly how many matches have you probably had in the last last year year and a bit oh god uh, you over, over 50 over 100 God, I, re- I really don't know. Like, uh, we'll say in between. Uh, yeah, in between. Like camp shows, you do like a, normally at least two matches per show as well, if you're counting that. Yeah, it's true. So, I mean, all those matches, it's one hell of mm. a lot of wrestling. Have you any, you picked yeah. up any sort of injuries at all? Or? You know what? No. Touch wood. Touch wood, touch wood, touch I, I did. Wood. I didn't mess up my intro until until uh, you, right? So uh, I don't want to jinx so you, maybe. Maybe I'm doing. I do not want to jinx you. <laughs> um, uh, the only injuries I've had um, were so. So I remember one time when I was wrestling on a trampoline because I did. I do that a lot. I wrestle on trampolines with my younger brother, and uh, we used to have like a garden wrestling federation on a trampoline, and. Uh, of course, that, that, that's, that's, that's great. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I remember I tried doing a, uh, a moon boy or a moon salt, and uh, someone ran underneath me as I went for it. So as I've oh. like swerved to try and get out of the way, my fingers have just gone straight down onto the trampoline, and I'm pretty oh. sure it like bent back and has touched like places they shouldn't be touching, and like just fractured my middle finger. Nice. Um, yeah, the X-ray was hilarious though. I'm pretty sure it was like my timeline picture on Facebook. I was so proud. <laughs> and like, yep. set, same thing. Unlucky that. with unlucky with moon salts. Like moon salt and smacking my knee off of the metal pole of the trampoline and fracturing part of my patella, which is quite funny. So you've got all your injuries through leisurely bouncing on your trampoline. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I've I've been quite lucky. Like I've had a few like near misses of like awkward landings or whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, like I, I remember one time uh, I went like I went it was uh, it was in a tag match. I see a guy get uh, my tag partner gets German and the guy like he does a release and it looks a bit meh. And so I was like All right, I'm gonna run in head of steam get German and I'm gonna moon it uh, like backflip land on my front. Yeah. Uh, as I've come in and swung he uh, he's ducked grabbed me gone for the German. Uh, and as I've gone to backflip it, he's held on, uh, which he oh. didn't tell me he was going to do. So he's held on, and uh, I've just gone straight on my head. Uh, and re- like really looking back at the footage, like I had someone send it over to me. Uh, looking back at it, it does not look tasty. Like, <laughs> but um, that, that's why I like try and bridge as often as possible. Cause I think that is just, like so important from people I've spoke to. If you can bridge as much as possible, like even if it's every training session, really bridging is something you should do like as often as possible because it will save your neck. Yeah. Uh, when you start getting on shows and wrestling more. Yeah, I mean, uh, one other match, uh, one match that stands out that I saw of yours, Lewis, was uh, was a match you had with uh, Connor Mills against the London Riots. Oh for yeah. For Battle Pro Wrestling, and well, I've got to say, listeners. 
if you have if you haven't seen this yet, if you're a fan of Mavericks and you haven't seen this yet, I highly advise you check this out. I'll have the yeah. link in the in the podcast description or where, wherever the hell I'll put the link. I'll put it in the <laughs> Facebook post as well. But I highly advise and. I mean, you got a standing. I don't want to spoil the the ending for people, but getting a standing ovation at the end of the match. How'd that feel? Yeah, man, uh, that is. Uh, I, I said it on Twitter. I've said it to to JD and Rob and Mills. That is hands down one of the proudest moments of my life. Um, that is one of probably one of my favourite matches I've ever had. Um, like, it meant so much to be able to like step into the ring again with JD who carried me through my first match to be standing there like two years later uh, in front of a totally new audience with new people that I've met. Um, it was almost like a round trip for me. Like, And if you look if you look closely at the footage, you'll see me like wiping away tears because that's how much that match meant to me. Like Backstage planning it, it didn't really feel like much, but yeah. when we got out there, I don't like something switched on like, I I went into a gear I haven't gone into in wrestling before. Like I I tried to give that match everything I could, and um, I'm sure Mills and Rob and JD were saying the same to themselves. Like we we wanted to as much as establishing M and M as as a, a formidable tag team in Battle Pro. We wanted to try and get Battle Pro like um, not not just good matches, but like good shows. And something that people talk about, like, go home and be like, you need to go to the next Battle Pro show. Or go on Twitter and tweet about how good the show was. If it's about, like, our match or however ever ma- like however many matches on the card that they can talk about. Um, and just seeing the respect of the fans and getting backstage and seeing, like, what uh, Daz and Simon had to say about it. It just, like, filled me with so much pride that I, I could go out there and have a solid match with them guys. Um, and then the, like the standing ovation and the, the, the that was awesome chant like meant so much to me like people say that that the, the, this was or that was awesome chant has like faded and lost its meaning but in that moment there that meant the world to me um, like I say like tearing up a bit and uh, you know th- it just meant so much to me I know it was a good moment, and you could tell it was a good, a good finish. It, it just built nicely all the way, and you could just, you could tell. And I suppose it, when you're in the match, you can kind of feel that kind of atmosphere, and then you kind of yeah, build man. up to it, and you feed off the crowd a little bit more. Yeah, that's what I try to do. Like, listen to the crowd. Like, you'll know when to go. Like a lot, uh, I had people like when I first started training. People were like, so when do you like? Not to me, obviously, because I don't know nothing. When they they were, they were just like so. When when do you start working up from a from a, a chin lock or something into the next spot? I remember uh, Tommaso Ciampa when I did a session with him at IPW. He was like, um, so he put a guy in a chin lock and he went right feet up and then he started getting up and he goes, no, I like I didn't say now. Like you just start getting up because that's what you're conditioned to do. You'll know when to go. Like when the crowd's up for you, because like what's what, what would be the point of going if the crowd don't care like you've got to make them care before you give them something and i feel like we had the crowd through most of that match whether it was the heat and then the finish like we felt like we had them um which is always a great feeling to have because it, it reassures you it makes you know that you're doing a good job and the people are actually enjoying it which is the yeah. main thing i think so i mean your tag team with with connor m and m yeah. How did that come about? Is it is that uh, is that you for the future now? Or is that something just for uh, Battle Pro? Or well, I, I don't know. I'd I'd love to take it wherever we could. But um, I, I love teaming with Mills because Mills is just so good. Like he is so good. Um, obviously debuting at Progress um, on the the pre-show, like with uh, with Simon. Like that was it. Must have been such a great moment for them guys because they definitely deserve it um but in terms of like formation of me and mills um i remember when the original plans came for battle pro uh i was told i was wrestling uh a guy called snare um and i was like oh yeah that's cool and then they were like oh no plans have changed a bit uh you'll be wrestling connor mills and like uh, i was just looking forward to having that match so much like yeah 
just uh, just to get to step in the ring with Mills would be great because I reckon we could have a great match one day. But um, and yeah, that and then they were like, actually, we're going to do something a bit different. And then uh, they told me about uh, Matt Walker's gimmick, where he like pretty much every show he comes out and he's like, I live down the road and you haven't booked me. Like, I, I want a match. Uh, and I remember the, the very first show for Battle Pro, me and Mills did a cool opening running spot into a, like the pinning sequence standoff and then Matt comes out and then we were like cool if you can find a partner then me and Mills will take you on and then he walks around for a bit and then finds a member of the ring crew <laughs> drags him in the ring uh, it was one of the pro Joe trainees brings him in the ring and then uh, we started teaming and then there was like uh, a bit at the end of the match when me and Mills won um, spoilers soz <laughs> uh, where we like he takes my shirt and puts it on and I take his jacket and put it on and we just stand there and pose and kind of look at each other and we're like yeah that'll, that'll do nice yeah nice. We, and then that led to the riots and uh, obviously the, ne- the next show um, at Battle Pro we take on the Bangra Knights Daryl Allen and RJ Singh which is a match I'm overly excited for Oh, nice, nice. When's uh, when's the next Battle Pro show? Oh God, you're going to make me sound awful here. I, uh, God, <laughs> I could edit. I could fun. edit this out, but I'm not going to. I'm going to make you suffer and try and find. Uh... It is the. Hang on, I've. Oh God, I don't know. <laughs> well, now you are going to make me edit this out. <laughs> I am. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Battle... wait. The Battle Pro show is. The 29th of September, I thought it was. The 29th of September. September 29th. And whereabouts is that? Just so you uh, can give that, it a cheap plug. The, uh, the, I always struggle on saying that the Live Z, the Live Z Memorial Hall in London, uh, which is in Catford or Sydenham, okay. which is one bus, <laughs> two buses away from my house, which is convenient. Very nice. You can get a nice bus home afterwards, then all in one piece. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, for uh, tag teams, mm. how would you? What tips would you give uh, people working as a tag team, training as a tag team, yeah. to try and get that chemistry and try and get over as a tag team? Um, in terms of chemistry with a tag partner, I uh, like. I'd advise people to spend time with their tag partner. Like, if you turn up to a show, and then just don't talk to your tag partner you like you're not gonna have chemistry at all like there's no point in you being a team so like i, I have i've quite a well, i'm gonna sound like a tag whore here but um <laughs> i have i've had quite a few tag partners and uh like dylan dylan d'angelo and peter bruh we're, we're going for the tag title soon um in a as we meet in the final uh of their tag tournament uh connor hunter in a wrestle force and ipw uh, Connor Mills and Battle Pro, like you've ju- you've just got to mix with your partners and make sure that you understand each other, know how each other work, and then put that together so you can work well. Um, and one, one advice that like one piece of advice I was given uh, when working tag matches, which is stuck with me, is if you're on the apron and your tag partner's taking the heat, don't just stand there because it makes you look like a mug like um obviously interact with an audience like try and get in the ring when it's suitable but um the the way i've been taught to think about it is imagine the person in the ring taking the heat is your best friend and you're like in a pub and you're watching your best friend get beaten up and you can't do anything because the bouncer or the ref is holding you back how will that make you feel and then how do you reflect that in your actions like because everyone does the whole ref, ref. He's he's cheating, ref. He's cheating, ref. Yeah. Turn around, like everyone does that. But like, how many people do you see like actually get past the ref? And then like, because there's a whole spot to be made there. Like, you know, just uh, from like a psychological standpoint, just imagine that person in the ring is your best mate, which like I'm not saying they should be, right? But imagine they are your best friend and you're watching them get beaten up. Like, how. And there's nothing you could do about it. Yeah, yeah, like, just make it look genuine. Like, you actually care for that person. Like, don't just stand there blank on the apron. 
solid advice. Solid, yeah. a lot of good advice in this. Uh, oh. memory. I like it. I, I well, take uh, on information. <laughs> no, you, you do. I like it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, what? As we're talking about tips now and all this great advice you're spewing out of yourself, <laughs> what, are the, what are the main tips you'd give to trainees? All right, so for the noobs, for the newbies oh, who've just noobs. turned up. What things did you struggle with when you started training, and what kind of advice would you give them? Uh, and the be Im- kind, because just remember, be I'm kind. still relatively a noob. Oh, it's fine. I'm still relatively a noob when you look at it. <laughs> um, the the one the most important piece of advice I could give you is tuck your chin. Um, unless you're taking a Styles Clash, tuck your chin. It will it will save you a whole lot of whiplash and headaches. Um. Um. When, when you start getting on shows and uh, you're going to shows, don't act too much like an idiot. Like I, you see it quite a bit now, where like I don't, I don't, I don't want to say like the word straws, but people use it a lot. Where like they'll they'll go in and like to all the like international stars on the show and act like they're their best mates. Like they're not there for you to be their friends. Like obviously like definitely go over and say hello like shake hands because that's obviously like a custom in british wrestling as i'm sure it is everywhere else but um don't make yourself look like an idiot because that will reflect on you because hopefully one day like if when you're training like i imagine you want to get on shows like it's going to reflect on you how you act before you get there um so just remember to like be professional because after all, like wrestling is a business for a lot of people. As much as yeah. we have fun with it and uh, we're with our mates and have a laugh, it is a business. Like people make money from it, um, so you should be professional. Of course, like have a laugh, train, um, like go out, do whatever, watch the show, enjoy the show, support the show, support wrestlers, buy their merch, but don't be like too unprofessional with them, uh, if if that makes sense. Yeah, no. Solid advice again. Mm. Oh, good. <laughs> so, who would you say? Who would you say is the wrestler that influenced you the most, apart from Trent Barreta? <laughs> Trent Barreta. <laughs> uh, what in terms of when I was starting or developing myself? Yeah, just kind of. Who's the kind of wrestler that you've looked at and thought you you kind of you base your kind of style around them? Is there any particular um, wrestler, or you've you kind of poached a few a few wrestlers? Well, yeah, I I, I try to take um like the the best of everything I can, like looking at different people, even like when I train with different people, taking on as much advice as I can and find out what works for me, what doesn't quite work. Um, just trying different things to try and make yourself as good as you can. Like, um, uh, but when I was growing up, I remember people like uh, Rey Mysterio a huge impact on me uh and then getting to meet him if, like a few months ago was just a highlight of my life um <laughs> uh people like eddie guerrero like uh now i can appreciate his work as a, as a worker but even as a as a younger child um i was gonna say as a child but as a younger child i was just like he'd have me captivated in his matches with like lying, cheating, stealing. That whole thing just yeah. was so over to me. Like, um, that made me laugh loads. Um, uh, but now, now, like, I've actually got into wrestling. People like um, the Young Bucks, I think they're incredibly clever. And like, not because they're like spot monkeys and I'm a young wrestler who thinks it's cool. In terms of like business, they are some of the most intellectual people in the world and um but like one of the people who've done who's done it most for me is a guy as will osprey um like he's in a sense taken me under his wing and uh like just been so kind to me when he has no reason to be like he's taught me so much he's he probably doesn't even know but he's taught he's taught me so much and like guided me through wrestling and giving me opportunities at RCWA like the only reason I'm working at RCWA now is because Will asked me to like I I, of course I had like aspirations to be there but Will got me in there and like obviously it's his promotion um he was like asking me to come along and be a part of the show uh which just meant the world to me like one of my 
I guess one of my heroes in a sense, like putting in a word for me and getting me on shows and teaching me stuff. Um, like he made my comeback, the comeback I use in matches now, he will made it. Like I, I gave little input, but he was the one who made it. And it's just such a fitting comeback. Like it, like I, I'm, I work very much on like the sounds of things, like what noise the crowd are making at the time. So yeah. like in my in my comeback is quite like, you know like there's up moments where I come in, and then there's a bit in the middle where it kind of lulls for well not lulls like, there's like a running spot, and people are like oh 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 until the big in Z oh <laughs> like, that's the payoff, um like he's so clever when it comes to like crowd work and stuff and camera work, and like re- recently uh oh like he's got his documentary coming out soon it's still taping for that i went down to the projo uh what, what was the projo um and was a part of that documentary and uh like he will, will's like done a lot for me that he probably doesn't realize like even putting stuff on his social media about me like doing the pizza toss or like recently he did a q a in uh in new zealand and uh he puts me over in that um by saying like stuff about the pizza toss and like just having people message me going oh have you seen what will said about you and i'm just like oh like <laughs> it, it's just it's so humbling to have like um like oh like really i've not been doing this long i like a lot of people would say like i sh- i shouldn't be at the level i'm at like now not that um like i, I try and keep as like um down to earth as possible and humble as possible but yeah being like having people like Will Ospreay saying such kind things about me really like means a lot you know like he's definitely someone I have lo- like looked up to and uh, like he supported me for a, a good portion of my career and just for yeah. that I'm grateful no, fair play I mean you, you've only just recently left uh, would you when, when did you leave school I'm still in school at the minute I mean uh, still in, I'm in college sick form it's at the insane. minute how yeah. how do you how's that I couldn't oh, get, I wouldn't God, get my head around uh, being a wrestler whilst being at school. Do you kind of want to just pack it all in and run away and do tours, or do you yeah. want to? Oh yeah, just, absolutely. Just, yeah. The amount of times I've just I been imagine. like, I can just leave now, like, because the only way I'm going to get better as a wrestler is putting more time. Yeah. Like, I'm not like I I, uh, I I've had like many disputes with my school where they're just like wrestling will get you nowhere like yeah. you're, you're dreaming too big what are you going to do when you're this old and you can't walk like well yeah. I'm not going to get a job am I I can't walk <laughs> <laughs> like what's the point um, and I've had like many meetings in my head teacher's office and they're like no you have to think seriously now what are you going to do for a career what are you going to do with your life I'm like I'm going to be a professional wrestler that's what I'm going to do and if you want to say something about it then fine but when I'm looking back, hopefully, when I'm looking back in a few years, yeah. you're not like you're not going to get the credit for it. You're going to be someone who I laugh at and say yeah. I proved wrong. Like, no, I'm I'm really like not trying to big myself up, but if I can get to a level where I can be like, well, I told you so. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, that would like my in my very first match, I had my maths teacher stood at the back watching me wrestle. And I remember he he went in the next day and he was like, no, guys, he is serious about this. Like, <laughs> he's taking this seriously. And they all kind of went, oh. And it was only, like, year 12 now where they've actually realized, wait a minute, like, he's actually doing stuff here. Yeah. Where, like, uh, like, the amount of times I've walked into school with, like, bags under my eyes and lumps on my head. Yeah. And they're like, Lewis, where's your homework? Like, oh, miss, I was wrestling. Like, oh, <laughs> fine. Give it to me tomorrow. Okay. Wow. Well, that's a different dynamic, I tell you. But I mean, oh. well, the, the good thing about it is it's scary the talent you've got for just being 17, and you do have the kind of luxury of, I suppose, finishing off school um, and mm. just kind of still kind of learning. And imagine yeah. what you're going to be like when you've left school and uh, you have got that extra extra couple of years of training under your belt. You're going to be yeah, uh, that's, I can only hope you'll for be the absolutely best, fine, absolutely fine. Yeah. So. But Mr. Maverick, it's yes. fan time. Oh, it's yes. It's time 
to talk to to Lewis, the Maverick Mayhew, the fan. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of, we spoke about tag teams. Straight off the bat, what's your favourite tag team ever? Oh God. Um, oh. Oh, don't do this to me. I'm so. <laughs> I'm literally. I'm the worst at picking favourites. I'm so bad. Like name, name a few. Name a few. Oh God. Oh God. Uh, the Trent Barrera was in a tag team. Trent what tag Barrera. team was he in? What was he uh, in? Oh, what was he in? He's a uh, Rapongi Vice, isn't he? That's no, he was, he was team, in Romany. Right? Uh, I'll find out. I'm gonna furiously Google when you. Uh, oh, when you okay, think. yeah. Oh, the uh, wasn't he with um, Kurt Hawkins? Was that him? Yeah, I think that's it. Is it that? Yeah, yeah. Is it Kurt Hawkins? I think. I think so. Trent and Kurt. Mm, we'll go with that. Uh, maybe. My, oh, yeah, my we'll Google furious that. We'll Google googling that. isn't going as quick as I'd like. Yeah. Uh, oh, like the Dudley Boys. Um, Edge and Christian, uh, the Hardys, old Hardys. Um, not new Hardys. No, nah, not so much for me. Like, is it everyone, too nostalgic everyone... now? Is it too? Uh, like yeah, when the Dudleys know. came back, it wasn't. It just wasn't the same. <laughs> nah, uh, I was always quite a big fan of Enzo and Cass. Actually, that was that was another thing. Um, is, is that still sore for you? That yeah, just breaking I them up. Oh, I, was, I was so sad. I'm so sad. He, oh, Croft God. and Kurt Hawkins, the dude, but uh, Kalen Croft. Who was that? And they were. <laughs> and they, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and they were called the Dude Busters. Kalen oh, Croft the, yeah, is. Yeah, I, uh, I know the Dude Busters. I've heard Kalen of Kalen Croft is currently just trying to see what Kalen Croft. Hopefully, Kalen <laughs> Croft isn't a listener. <laughs> oh yeah, God, I hope not. Sorry, Kalen, if you're listening. <laughs> Uh, I think his uh, wrestling career ended. He got released from his contract in 2010. Oh, uh, sorry and, to hear and that, there's, mate. there's nothing um, else. Uh, so, Kalen, whatever you're doing with your life, I hope uh, it's satisfying and you're getting everything you can out of it. Yeah, tweet me if you want. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> All right, moving on. The one wrestler, the one wrestler alive today, anywhere in the world, wherever you know them, whether they're on WWE, anybody. Who would you want to wrestle a match with? Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay. I had a feeling that was coming. I yeah, feel, I'd, I feel oh, like... that would be a dream for me. If just to get the pizza toss in a match at some yeah. point, like that, that oh, would what, just do it for me. Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 what I'll do is uh, so the listeners know what this pizza toss is. I'll, I'll share the link in the Facebook oh, post yeah. and the podcast post as well, so people know uh, oh, know what you're talking love, about. Love the pizza toss. Favorite talent you have ever worked with in the ring. Oh, um, you can name a few because I know it's not yeah. nice to kind of. <laughs> I've worked with Will once, but that was in like a scrum match. That was fun. Um, working with Daryl's quite good. Daryl Allen, that's always good fun. Uh, James Davis, just because he was like good, good to me. Um, Spike Treve, Spike Treve is always really fun to work with. Um. Because we work together so many times, like yeah. it's just so fun. We just repeat the same spots. Like, it's just great for calling, like calling stuff on the fly, trying new moves. Like they're all, he's yeah. always up for it. Uh, being really indie on a on a camp show is amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's probably some of them. I, I know I've missed someone, so sorry. Um, <laughs> that's all right. Okay, so SummerSlam, who's walking out Universal Champion? Oh God! I don't even watch WWE that much anymore. Don't Who's say out? this. Don't Who's say this. It's fan w- time, Lewis. Who's walking <laughs> out? Over... Universal champion. Do you know who's in the match? Go on, t- right? Give me, give me a re- right. You Sorry. don't even know. You make me. A- I feel like such a fanboy. You are a fanboy. <laughs> I am a fanboy. Uh, Brock Lesnar. Oh, uh, God, Braun yeah. Strowman. Do you know who Braun Strowman is? No, who's that? No, I know Braun oh, Strowman. Oh, you rascal! Uh, I told you he's a cheeky <laughs> chap. Uh, yeah. Braun Strowman, Brock Lesnar, uh, Samoa Joe, and Roman Reigns. Oh, this match, okay. Um, I've heard a lot of people back in Braun for some reason. Like, I like they're, Braun. They're the ones saying that, um, like everyone's saying Braun should be walking away with it. Um, so I'm just going to jump on that bandwagon. My boy Braun. Your boy Braun. Coming out with a red strap. It's red, isn't it? It's red. <laughs> it is, unfortunately. It okay, is red, okay. Yeah. Red and strap. it's called a universal, which is just terrible. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, 
Lewis, I've got to say, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Your yeah, man. advice alone for me has been valuable, let alone all the listeners as well. Yeah. Any any parting words for people? Any shout outs at all? Any shout outs? Oh, any shout check, outs? Check out check out my boy Harrison Ashbury. He's Harrison my Ashbury. he's an he's an absolute lad. Uh, Joe Lando, he's he's a lad. He's he's going places as is Harrison. Um, shout out to Braun Strowman, my boy, my absolute boy, <laughs> taking the red strap, <laughs> universal champion, mate. Shout out to Holly because I know she's probably going to be listening to this. Holly Vase Vass. <laughs> Holly Vase Vass. Holly Vase Vass. Yeah, I met on the camp shows actually. Um, shout shout out to uh to the promotions who have housed me and let me display my inverted commas talent um shout out to everyone who's ever trained me and made me uh made me who i am and molded me into the person i am today and thank you to everyone who's listening shout out to all you <laughs> shout out to shout out to niall nigel <laughs> Brilliant! Thank you very much. You shouted me out on my own podcast. There you go, mate. Shout out <laughs> thank to you the very intro. much. <laughs> <laughs> I could go forever, but thank you for having me. Seriously, not a problem at all. It's been what amazing. What about how can people keep up to date with you? Um, what I are am, your social media? I am on Twitter at Maverick underscore Mayhew. I am on Instagram at that underscore Lewis underscore Kid. Love that and, uh, name, by the way. Um, thank you. So simple. Um, oh, it's just what they called me in school. <laughs> that Lewis <laughs> that Lu- kid. That Lewis kid, the wrestler. <laughs> oh, him. Um, so that's what they called me in school. They still do. And uh, my Facebook fan page is Maverick Mayhew, fittingly. Brilliant. Any merch? Uh, uh, yes. No DQ you've got clothing. A, you've yeah. got a wonderful T-shirt, haven't you? Yeah. Two designs, uh, blue and white and black and white. Uh, check them out uh, I'm also probably going to be dropping some new merch soon and getting some new stuff um, I started selling fidget spinners recently on camp shows <laughs> nice <laughs> went, it's different. went down a tree I've got no more has it, but I'll has it got more. your face in the middle yeah, is letter, your face it on it has a letter M has a letter M and uh, uh, some custom stickers that I have that my mum bought for me my mum's such a darling shout out for my mum she gets all my merch and stuff shout out to Maverick's mum so I, yeah. I felt like I needed to give her a shout out. Well. Yeah. Oh, so. oh, funny, funny story actually. We went to uh, when I was wrestling at ACW last time. Uh, like obviously my mum comes to all the shows, and uh, I, I was stood in the ring, and uh, Alexander Roth uh, looks over at me and he goes, "What's he doing here? He's just a boy. Don't you need like parental consent or something?" So I went, "Hang on a minute." Lean out the ring and I go, "Mum, mum, am I am I allowed to take part in this wrestling match today?" And she goes. Yeah, kick his ass. I'm like, thanks, mum. <laughs> and then uh, the Mama Mayhew chants ensued. It was a uh, ah, brilliant, great fun. Good Shout stuff. out, mum. Good stuff. Well, yeah. Mr. Mayhew, it's been an absolute pleasure. You are absolutely, a, man. A very funny dude. You truly are a gentleman. Thank and you very thank much. Thank you very much for appearing on the show. No, thank you for having me. Not a problem at all. So, guys and girls, that is it for this week. Episode 10 is down and done. Thanks for following my journey, listening to this show. And guys and girls, I look forward to wrestling a match with you all soon. And I'll speak to you all next week. Thank you again for listening and people I need your help I would love it if you could pop over to iTunes to leave this podcast a review your reviews are so important to me I need to understand what you think of the show and it helps just raise awareness for everyone else on this show and not only that guys if you have a friend or a relative 
who you know is an avid wrestling fan, please point them in this podcast's direction.